In the heart of Vernon Township, New Jersey, there once stood an amusement park like no other. Action Park, they called it. A place that would later earn the title of America's deadliest amusement park. Six lives were lost in the pursuit of the ultimate thrill, and countless injuries marred its history. And still, despite the tragedies, people still flocked to the park. The shocking part was that no action was taken, irrespective of the deaths and injuries. But what was the cause of these recurrent tragedies? And how come it went on for so long? This is the unfortunate story of how Action Park became a beacon of tragedy in its years of existence. Action Park, which opened in 1978, was the brainchild of Eugene Mulvihill, a visionary with dreams of captivating the masses. The park stood in the Vernon Valley. Action Park beckoned visitors with its triad of excitement, the Alpine Center, where individuals could ascend the heights and embrace the adrenaline-pumping descents. The Motorworld area catered to speed enthusiasts, boasting a host of racing-themed rides and tracks. And then, there was Waterworld, one of the earliest modern water parks in the United States, luring thrill-seekers with its aquatic adventures. It was no secret that Action Park existed to tempt the boldest humans, and each of its sections had several exhilarating rides, however they were terribly unsafe. From the Action Park Gladiator Challenge, Alpine Slide, Snapple Snap Up Whipper Snapper Ride, Skateboard Park, and Transmobile in the Alpine Center attractions, to the land, water, and air rides in the Motor World, and the Water World, which had a Cannonball Loop, Tidal Wave Pool, Aqua Skook, Kamikaze, Kayak Experience, Tarzan Swing, and many more. Each ride had unique features and types that only added to its thrill. Despite its reputation as the world's most dangerous amusement park, Action Park never lacked visitors. But why? The answer was simple, the allure of danger. The park's reputation for pushing boundaries drew adventurers from far and wide. Each year, the park was filled with those willing to embrace the unknown, eager to revel in the heart-pounding escapades that awaited them. The first fatality at Action Park occurred in the summer of 1980, when a fateful day on the Alpine Slide turned into a nightmare. The Alpine Slide in New Jersey was like a big slide, but instead of sliding on the water, you slid down a hillside using a special sled. The sled had wheels, and you could control your speed with a handbrake. To start the ride, you take a chairlift to the top of the hill. You get on the sled and then go down the track. The concrete track had lots of twists and turns, making the ride exciting and fast. The best part was that you could decide how fast or slow you wanted to go. If you felt like going really fast, you could let the sled fly down the hill. But if you get nervous, you can use the handbrake to slow down or even stop. George Larson Jr., a 19-year-old park employee, was there at the Alpine slide when his sled veered off course, leading to a devastating collision with a rock. He was seriously injured and was rushed to the hospital, where he died after eight days. Everyone thought George's death would end the ride, but the opposite happened. The ride didn't close. Instead, Staff placed hay bales on the corners to catch riders flung from the track, which was a common occurrence. Two years after the death of George at the Alpine Slide, another incident occurred at the park. However, this time, it was the Tidal Wave Pool. The Tidal Wave Pool was like a gigantic swimming pool, but what made it special was that it created big waves, just like you'd find at the beach. When you entered the pool, you'd notice that the water was calm at first, like a regular pool. But then, after a certain time, the wave machine would kick in, and huge waves would start forming. It was like being in the ocean. The waves were powerful, and you could ride them just like you would ride waves at the beach. People loved to jump and play in it, feeling the rush of water lift them up and down. George Lopez, a 15-year-old boy, lost his life while enjoying what should have been a day of laughter and fun at this gigantic swimming pool. The waves that brought joy to many became a relentless adversary stealing away a young life. In the same year, a month after the drowning of the 15-year-old boy, another tragedy struck. This time was on the kayak experience ride. This ride was designed to give people a taste of what it's like to paddle through a river's twists and turns, all within the safety of a controlled environment. At the beginning of the ride, each person was given a special kayak-like boat. These boats were cleverly designed to look and feel like real kayaks, complete with paddles and a comfortable seating area. However, instead of being on a natural river, the kayaks were placed on a controlled track or water channel within the park, 
ensuring a safe and controlled environment. Once seated in their kayaks, riders eagerly awaited their turn to set sail. With anticipation building, the kayaks were gently sent down the artificial river or waterway. The river was meticulously crafted with various turns, bends, and obstacles to mimic the sensation of navigating through a real river. As the kayaks glided along the waterway, participants could use their hands or paddles to navigate through the twists and turns. The ride was carefully designed to provide the excitement of going through rapid-like sections and gentle currents, all while staying within the confines of the park's safe and controlled environment. A 27-year-old man was electrocuted while enjoying this ride. When he was tipped from his boat, his foot hit a metal grating exposed to a live wire. Even though the New Jersey Labor Department investigated the incident and ruled that no safety regulations were violated, the kayak experience was soon shut down. As the summer of 1984 unfolded, Action Park's Tarzan Swing awaited eager participants, ready to offer the promise of an amazing adventure. Little did they know that tragedy would strike once more. The well-known fictional character Tarzan, famous for swinging through the jungle on vines, inspired the Tarzan Swing. It was an adventurous attraction that let visitors experience the excitement of swinging through the air just like Tarzan. From a high platform, participants would grab hold of a long rope or vine and leap, soaring through the sky with adrenaline. It was as if they were flying through a jungle like the famous fictional character. The ride consisted of a 30-foot-long swinging cable where guests could ride and jump into the frigid water below. Amidst the cheers and laughter of those enjoying the Tarzan swing, an unforeseen tragedy lurked in the shadows. A visitor, seeking the thrill of swinging high above the pool and plunging into its icy depths, succumbed to the shock of a fatal heart attack. The ride, designed to provide excitement and entertainment, transformed into a place of sorrow and loss. The atmosphere, which had once been lively, was filled with sadness as guests struggled to accept that a life had been cut short due to unforeseeable events. As the park mourned the loss of yet another soul, questions arose again. Was it the shock of the cold water that triggered the heart attack? Were there underlying health issues that went unnoticed? The answers remained elusive, leaving behind a trail of sorrow and uncertainty. That was not the end of the tragedies in Action Park, yet people still troop to the park every year. Action Park suffered yet another devastating loss just a few weeks after the tragedy of George Lopez's drowning in the Tidal Wave Pool. Amidst the waves and laughter that once filled the Tidal Wave Pool, 20-year-old Donald DePass met a fate no one could have foreseen. The waves, which had brought joy to countless visitors before, became relentless, overwhelming Donald's ability to stay afloat. Despite the efforts of lifeguards and park staff, tragedy struck once more as Donald succumbed to the powerful currents. After Donald's passing, there was no more death at the park until 1987, when tragedy struck again. Guess where this time around? The tidal wave pool. On what should have been a carefree summer day at the Tidal Wave Pool, 18-year-old Gregory Grandchamps was entangled in a chilling struggle against the waves. As waves crashed around him, Gregory's struggle to stay afloat went unnoticed until it was too late. The once playful waters that had beckoned visitors now concealed a hazardous undertow. Despite the swift response of lifeguards and park staff, Gregory's life was tragically cut short marking the third drowning incident in the tidal wave pool's haunting history. Questions arose and people started talking. The third death accident at the tidal wave pool? What was wrong? The management had no words for the disturbing questions from the people. People nicknamed it the grave pool because of the number of individuals it had taken. When the matter got to the state, it was classified as a swimming pool and not a ride which meant the only regulations it needed to maintain were clean water and lifeguards standing by. This proclamation by the state worried not just the parents of the victims, but also parents generally. Though some feared the gigantic swimming pool, others were attracted to the thrill of danger lurking nearby. While the tidal wave pool bore witness to tragic drownings, other rides at Action Park also proved to be dangerous in their own right. The Cannonball Loop, a looping water slide touted as an engineering marvel, boasted a thrilling experience like no other. However, the excitement it promised came at a steep cost. It was not like any ordinary slide you might find at a regular water park. This one was special, 
and some might even say crazy. Imagine a giant curvy tube that spiraled and looped like a roller coaster. Yes, you heard that right, a loop. When you went down this slide, you didn't just glide smoothly. You will be taken on a wild ride with twists, turns, and a full 360 degree loop. It was both thrilling and scary, and many brave souls were eager to try it. But this slide was not for the faint of heart. Those who dared to ride it were subjected to intense G-forces that pushed and pulled on their bodies, making it a bumpy and rough experience. In fact, the slide was so crazy that even test dummies sent down before the park opened ended up coming out of the loop without their heads. Yikes! As you can imagine, with all its daring twists and turns, the cannonball loop proved to be quite risky. Many riders emerged with scraped bodies and even chipped teeth from the force of the slide. After only a month of operation, the state safety regulators decided it was just too dangerous for the park goers. So they closed it down, and it became one of the most infamous rides in Action Park's history. While the Cannonball Loop may have been an exciting adventure, it also served as a stark reminder of the park's daring and sometimes risky attractions. The ride left a lasting impression on those who experienced its gravity-defying loops and wild twists. Despite the alarming number of accidents and fatalities at Action Park, state regulators seemed slow to take decisive action. Despite repeated violations and safety concerns, the park continued operating without major repercussions. The classification of the tidal wave pool as a swimming pool instead of a ride raised eyebrows, as it meant the pool only had to meet basic regulations, such as clean water and lifeguards. This left many people questioning the effectiveness of the oversight and whether enough was being done to protect visitors. To keep the park solvent, Eugene Mulvihill's Action Park Management used various financial strategies. The park was notorious for employing young and inexperienced staff, often paying them minimal wages. This raised concerns about the quality of supervision and maintenance, and highlighted the management's priority of cutting costs over ensuring safety. Furthermore, the park implemented a system requiring visitors to purchase tickets for individual rides instead of an all-inclusive pass. This meant that visitors would pay for each ride separately, enticing them to go on multiple rides during their visit. The financial gains from the high-ticket sales overshadowed the importance of ensuring each ride's safety, leading to a dangerous environment. In the wake of the accidents, there were allegations that Action Park attempted to hide injuries and incidents from the public and regulators. Reports suggested that the park staff sometimes handled accidents without involving emergency services or reporting incidents properly. This lack of transparency added to the mounting concerns about the park's commitment to visitor safety and raised questions about the trustworthiness of its management. As investigations into the park's operations intensified, so did the demand for accountability. The tragedies at Action Park sparked a broader discussion about amusement park safety across the nation. Calls for more robust regulations and oversight gained momentum as the public became increasingly aware of the potential risks posed by thrill-seeking attractions. As the years went by, Action Park's reputation as America's deadliest amusement park became increasingly difficult to shake off. The mounting accidents and injuries garnered significant media attention, causing public perception to shift dramatically. Families and thrill-seekers began to think twice before venturing into the park's risky attractions. With each tragic incident, public scrutiny intensified, and visitors grew more apprehensive about the park's safety measures. Even though the park continued to draw visitors, its reputation had suffered, and an air of caution and fear had replaced the previous sense of excitement. The tide turned decisively for Action Park when personal injury lawsuits began piling up. Families of victims and injured parkgoers sought justice and compensation for their losses. These lawsuits highlighted the park's negligence and lack of proper safety protocols, focusing squarely on the management's responsibility for the accidents. Some rides, such as the infamous Cannonball Loop, were closed down due to the alarming number of injuries and legal actions against the park. The looping water slide, once touted as a groundbreaking engineering marvel, ultimately became a symbol of the park's disregard for visitor safety. The financial struggles that plagued Action Park contributed significantly to its eventual closure in 1996. The combination of expensive lawsuits and dwindling attendance due to the park's tarnished reputation took a heavy toll on its finances. 
The park was no longer the profitable venture it once was, and its inability to recover from the financial blows was evident. Furthermore, the ever-increasing insurance premiums due to the park's hazardous record made it challenging to sustain operations. The park faced a formidable financial burden that ultimately proved impossible. Action Park, once a symbol of daring and adventure, failed in a storm of controversies and financial woes. The rides that once delighted visitors now stood as relics of a bygone era, marking the end of an ambitious but ill-fated amusement park experiment. In 1996, the gates of Action Park closed for the last time. The once vibrant and bustling amusement park now stood abandoned, its rides silenced, and its future uncertain. Action Park faded into memory as the years passed, but its legacy endured. It became a cautionary tale for the amusement park industry, a reminder of the crucial importance of safety and responsible management. The stories of the lives lost and the injuries suffered within its confines served as a sad reminder that the pursuit of excitement must never come at the cost of visitor safety. Despite its troubled history and eventual closure, Action Park's legacy endures in the memories of those who once experienced its unique brand of thrill-seeking. For many, it remains a nostalgic and formative part of their youth, where they tested their courage and reveled in the excitement of daring rides. Visitors who survived the heart-pounding adventures within its gates carry with them stories of triumph and, for some, stories of injuries or near misses that serve as cautionary tales. Action Park became more than just an amusement park. It became a rite of passage, symbolizing daring and resilience. Action Park's notorious reputation for danger and wild rides was brought to the big screen in 2018 with the release of the movie Action Point. Johnny Knoxville, known for his roles in Jackass and other daring projects, starred in the movie, which drew inspiration from the amusement park's dangerous and chaotic history. Action Point took a comedic approach to the park's history, depicting a fictional but heavily inspired version of Action Park. The movie centered around the park's owner's misadventures and its visitors' reckless antics. It celebrated the park's spirit of adventure while also poking fun at the questionable safety measures and the resulting mayhem. Action Park's history is a tragic tale of daring adventures, devastating accidents, and lives lost too soon. From its inception, it beckoned thrill-seekers with promises of excitement and heart-pounding experiences. However, pursuing extreme thrills came at a steep cost, as the park witnessed the loss of several lives and numerous injuries. The pursuit of thrills should never come at the expense of human lives. Action Park's history is a cautionary tale, urging us to prioritize safety and responsibility in our quest for excitement. It reminds us that the boundary between thrill and peril is often thin, and that the price of negligence can be high. Let Action Park's legacy serve as a solemn reminder of the importance of responsible amusement park management and the need to prioritize the well-being of visitors and employees above all else. Only then can we ensure that the pursuit of thrill remains an enjoyable and safe endeavor for generations to come. Let us know in the comment section if you've ever been to Action Park, or if you would ever try these dangerous rides if it were still open today. If you love thrilling marathon videos like this, stay tuned for the next adventure.